I'm Dave Kassler, KE0OG, and for episode 61, we're going to talk about lightning protection and specifically the little device from Alpha Delta that does that. I'm setting up everything to test some loop antennas, so I want the path between my radio and the antenna to be the same, both for my loop and for the, end, the, the antenna under test. And I use these little um, surge protectors. Um, they're made by Alpha Delta. Okay, this model right here, TTG, TT3G50, right here, has got coax in, coax out, or you can go the other way, it doesn't matter. And then it has a pin on it made of stainless steel. And the reason for the stainless steel is because this is aluminum and you're going to be attaching this to a copper plate. So it has aluminum. This is the same, by the way, as um, quarter inch um, bolts and nuts that you can get. Note that right there, there is a hex so that you can tighten the bolt directly into the block and you've got a lock washer again stainless steel out here that will be up against the the plate the copper plate or whatever you're attaching it to this is the ground and this is what will take the bulk of the current in the event of a lightning transient now the way the thing actually works is that in here you can see uh, the wire going across you can see a little bit of solder on the wire going across that goes from center conductor to center conductor and then there are these little plug-in modules right here this is um, a gas filled tube there's a little point right there that will initiate a spark if it's the voltage is too high and then run that directly to ground so in the event of a surge you'll get a spark sparks have fairly low voltage across them about 30 volts so that will clamp the voltage going into your transceiver at 30 volts which is fine um, and then the rest of the current will flow right directly into the ground so this is plugged in here and is hand tightened like that just enough to seal it right there and then it works fine okay now these are uh, called transi traps they use the term lightning protection but if you read the fine print carefully what you find out is they're talking about lightning surge protection a direct strike can destroy almost anything so uh, this comes with uh, the instructions on how these things are to be mounted as you can see here uh, you can mount them in an angle type thing or straight directly and then there's uh, more information here on the transi trap surge protector and uh, putting that in and they're available in every conceivable type of uh, connector in and out now this is an example of a single point ground for structure and you can see the the ground wire going up into the radio station the ground wire going down to the ground rod and over here on this bus bar big hairy copper bus bar is one of these uh, transit protectors right here up against that is screwed down pretty well you got to be careful of course if you're dissimilar metal uh, type things you might want to put a uh, stainless steel uh, washer in there okay so now I should point out that there are two models of interest to amateur radio operators and we can see them on the paper here um, the model here that's got the UHF female connectors okay it's the ones like uh, PL259 uh, and the UHF female would be an SO239 there's uh, one rated at 200 watts and another rated at 2 kilowatts the one with 200 watts works well with a 100 watt 
uh, transceiver but if you're going to have an amplifier you want the 2 kilowatt one and the reason that you want that is because the voltage in an amplified signal will be enough that this thing over here will conduct it will actually arc over and conduct so that's why you you want the, the difference uh, the little interior uh, piece this is the glass capsule from one or ceramic capsule um, that shows the one for the higher voltage this is the one for the lower voltage by the way this came out of here which is a fault um, I don't know how it was originally put in there but it looks to me like it uh, it got uh, zapped by nearby lightning strike which can induce quite a bit of voltage in an antenna and caused it to come apart so the one that we have in in my lap uh, is the one that is the lower voltage it's got the red lettering on it the one with the gray lettering on it is the higher voltage so we're using this with 200 watts out of the antenna now uh, the vertical is set up with an antenna inline so I actually have the higher voltage one but since it's not going to be arcing in either case it doesn't matter okay the next question is where do you get these and how much do they cost um, you can get them at DX engineering is one place you can go and they cost uh, on the order of fifty dollars fifty one ninety five I think for this one right here it comes with the stud right here for mounting and it comes with the uh, replaceable cap uh, the entire thing is meant to be replaceable by the way I would suggest you get maybe a couple extra of these replaceable things because you may find that one day you're just checking your system and find that that's broken loose from it you want to be able to replace that if that gets in there sideways it can short the thing out so we don't want to do that so DX engineering 53 bucks you can get these most anywhere Alpha uh, Delta another brand is polyphaser there's uh, all kinds of things out there but you want to make sure that you get a good solid one not something chintzy or one-time use I'm going to put this one outside along with the others so that when I wire to the MFJ1788 loop uh, my signal will go through a transi trap just like it does for my loop or my vertical that allows for a very careful apples to apples comparison so this is uh, our next step is to have this ready and in our next video we'll cover making the coax cable that will go from here to the actual antenna until then please click on like please subscribe use both feet when walking please it's a lot easier that way and until next time 73